Okay, so we're now recording. So welcome everyone to this Technorama Tuesday session um, uh, with Technorama and the Community Media Training Organization. Um, we have Josh Pearson on the line. I'm going to take you through uh, a whole bunch of cool technology and have a little bit of a chat about it. Um, so if you do want to talk, there's not a heap of people in the room tonight. So if you wanted to pop your hand up, um, I can turn your microphone on and um, you can have a chat to Josh, Josh or ask him questions or you can put them in the Q&A or the chat box and we'll come to them when we come to a kind of natural break. Um, so over to you, Josh, I'm going to turn my video off. Thank you very much, Rodi. Um, hello everyone, um, I am currently broadcasting from a shopping centre, we'll call it like an outside location OB here, so um, feel free to, um, you know, I said, put something in chat, put your hand up if you've got any questions, um, if you have any issues, there shouldn't be too many people behind me, the shopping centre is closed, but um, welcome tonight, we're going to go through uh, connected apps and probably specifically talk a little bit about Office 365. Um, if you have questions, do, you know, again, would you raise your hand, click the little raise hand button or jump up into the chat. Um, welcome. So I guess those of you who are here probably know who Technorama is, but Technorama is around to support. Um, uh, to, Technorama is a round to basically promote, you know, learning technology throughout the entire community sector. So um, jump onto the technorama.org.au website and yeah, have a look and find out some more information. We can always offer some stuff there. Um, what we're trying to get out of tonight is obviously, you know, why we're here, what problems do you need to solve, how this will help, what can you do, how well does it work, and how to do it in our cost. So talking about Office 365. Um, the reason why we're here is this was a pretty strong topic at Technorama uh, 2019 in Campbelltown in 2019. We did some surveys and people were very keen to um, learn about Office 365 or, or connecting apps and how you can move your organisation to an online cloud. Um, all right, I'm going to jump into this in the interest of fun time. But the first thing I guess I need to intro everyone to is Connecting Up. Uh, Connecting Up is a non-profit organisation that works to unleash the power of other not-for-profit organisations through technology by providing a variety of information, products, resources and programs. It's their mission statement. I think it's a pretty good way to sum up who they are and why they're there. Um, they basically exist to be able to offer technology at a very reasonable discount or free to non-profits and they're a global they're part of a company called TechSuit which is a global company that that fights for all these partnerships around the world um, so big organizations like Microsoft Adobe licensing uh, IBM uh, Google to name a couple um, I'll jump onto one of the next things and I'll tell you to get access to connecting up um, you do need to register they are very easy to talk to. You can either give them a call over the phone or you can just head straight to their website um, and give them uh, a call, sign up, provide some details, and you will straight away be able to um, jump in and, and I guess, you know, use them and be offered to their products. What kind of products do they have? This is everything they've got. Um, I'll leave it up on the screen. Now, I'm going to, going to share these with people um, later on, uh, so people can uh, I'll share this slide, it'll be up on the Technorama website and probably share that through CMTR later on, uh, Jordy can answer that. Um, there are some amazing things you can get from refurbished computers, Amazon Web Services, online cloud hosting, um, everything. You know, and if you don't have it, I've um, had stuff before where we've asked them about it and Synology NASA's were one of, the, one of the particular things there and they managed to get some great discount prices there. Right, um, okay, so sorry, I'm just going to jump forward because I can't see my slide notes at the moment. I'm on a single screen here. Uh, so one of the things I guess that I want to talk about particularly is connecting to the cloud and online licensing and stuff. So connecting up to a really great thing where they offer a Office 365 ready readiness assessment, um, and which basically will enable you, I'll go through that. Someone just jump on. Uh, so connecting up, yeah, can offer this Office 365 readiness assessment and what you get. Basically, they will do all the hard work for you. They will find out what you've got, what you need to do, 
um, to basically get your organization online. So this is if you want to make a really simple and quick way or, or get some stuff. Um, they'll work out whether it's going to cost you anything. They'll work out how you can, um, you know, what, what, what apps are relevant to your organization, what you're currently using. Their assessment is really, really thorough. I don't know if anyone here in the chat has ever done this with them before. Feel free to stick your hand up and tell us about your experience. Um, but, look, you know, doing this readiness assessment, if, you're organ if you don't have someone who's tech savvy and you're really, tech really like web tech savvy in your organization, will make life a lot easier. They'll make it very easy to get through, you know, what you need to know and what apps you need to connect to straight away to get you guys going across. And um, Office, uh, connecting up also through Office run some great webinars and training sessions on really specific things like setting up domains and, and all that kind of stuff. But we'll, we'll go through some of that later on in this. I just want to kind of get this into, um, you know, what's available out there and what you can do. All right, so I'm just closing off some things so I can see things here. Um, one of the, I guess the, the big popular questions is something that I was asked at uh, Technorama this year was how do I get connecting, how do I get Office 365 through connecting up? It's really straightforward. You register for connecting up, get that, get that approved, and then you just jump straight onto the Office um, products website, and there's a non-for-profit link, um, which again, I'll share in this document later on. You click on the, the link, and it will take you straight to a registration page. You enter your organizational details, your connecting up um, code, and away you go. It's that simple to, I guess, register yourself in, in this portal. Um, I put some stuff in here, obviously, about plans and prices, and I've got some screen grabs in the next thing. Office 365 is particularly free. The, the only thing that's not free is if you want to go, I guess, further down to stuff. Uh, thanks to Jordy, she said if you want a higher number, look in the chat window, guys, there is a um, number that you can call to dial in if you're having audio issues. Uh, and a good question from John Vincent, who says, are you only going to talk about Office 365? John, primarily we will talk about Office 365 because that's the experience that we've had at Technorama and can, I guess, talk a lot about it. Um, I will go through about some Google products shortly about other things that are available on the market. All right, so Office 365, um, I guess, you know, it, it, primarily it is three, but if you guys want to get, if anyone's looking for a way of registering their organization um, and having the office products available to install on their local computers, you can do this for $4 a month. It is quite a easy way of, um, it is a very easy way of, you know, getting access and, and very discounted access to the online apps. Um, and things like Publisher and PC, which a lot of people use. Um, as well as, so what you get for free is you basically get down here, you get all of the, oh, sorry, you get all of the uh, Exchange Online, which is emails, access to OneDrive, which works out to be a terabyte of storage per user in the cloud, access to SharePoint, which again offers you some storage for files in the cloud, Skype for Business, which is a great way to meet online and or chat if you need to, and also something new um, or recently released in the last couple of years, which is called Microsoft Teams, which enables you to create yourself so a project space, work on individual groups or teams and issues and, and set up shared mailboxes and stuff with inside the cloud. So a lot of uh, community radio stations, I guess, still use local, you know, SMTP based servers that they host themselves or host through a web hosting company. This is a really good, um, way of, I guess, you know, getting yourself online in the cloud and, and, and minimizing the amount of stuff you need to put uh, store locally. You can share it on the cloud and, and maximize your space. A lot of, a lot of free web ho email hosting, you know, has limited space. Heidi's asked a question, is that just for a station that has several computers? Is this station, is that just for a station that has, she wrote several but meant one. You can do this for just one if you want and, and pay it, you know, pay this price and have an email address and, and everything, but it really depends on what your station needs. I'm more than happy if people want to shoot me an email um, at Technorama. You know, we can help, um, you know, point you in the right direction of what kind of things you need. But again, uh, the connecting up ready, readiness assessment will kind of, you know, is a really good way to tell you whether this product's right for you and you can access that for free after registering for, for, uh, for connecting up. 
Um, does anyone have any questions or anything they want answered by at this point? There's probably a lot of things to digest. I'm just trying to do some things here, guys. Sorry. Just trying to get the questions and answers boxes <laughs> happening. Um, I don't think there's any questions in there at the moment. No, that's right. Let's just switch screens and, and move things back. So yeah. um, someone, was it Harry who's jumped on or someone said we've installed Office on all our computers but we only paid once? That's me. Sorry, I sent yeah. it to yeah. Harry instead of to everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, um, we yeah, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but we paid for Office 365 subscription and we've installed it on all of our laptops. And essentially you can use it on all of the laptops. But if you want to use your shared documents and like your shared space, then you have to log in and you can only have so many login instances happening at once. Yeah. Like, and, but it does mean that you can use all of the applications on all of the computers. Yeah, correct. So you can, you know, you can use all the applications on all the computers as long as someone in your organization is licensed. So Microsoft do allow you to connect up to five computers to one license, but they, they aren't really very restrictive on that. You can go further. Um, providing, you know, it's a not-for-profit license. If it's a commercial license, they are very strict on making sure they cut you off when you need to be cut it off. Awesome. Oh, no, sorry, I lost. Making sure I'm not talking too fast. So I guess, you know, we've probably jumped straight into talking really about Office 365 and, and, and you know, various, but there are other apps available. So as mentioned before, one of the other apps you can jump onto is G Suite for not-for-profits. So um, G Suite, uh, I don't know if anyone here has a Gmail account or, or stuff, but G Suite is basically the collection of um, Google apps run by Google that are available. They offer a basic package to anybody who is registered with Connecting Up or TechSoup. So as long as you're all, you basically qualify to, connect to, to register for Connecting Up, you can register, uh, same as Microsoft for G Suite, and um, they give you a very basic plan. So it's usually $8.40 a month. You get it for free. Part of that you get um, business email, voice, video and voice conferencing, uh, a messenger chat program, and you can create documents and spreadsheets. You also get 30 gig of cloud storage. Um, when doing a lot of reviews and stuff on this for nonprofits or organizations, one of the biggest things that I guess sways people back to uh, using a Microsoft product is basically the amount of space that you can get. So. For cloud storage, it's a terabyte of data per user. Um, and for email storage, it's 50 gig per user. So with G Suite for nonprofits, they, they actually restrict everything to 30 gig per user. Cool, no questions, no, no. So I've just got a John, question. Uh, oh, sorry, John just makes a comment. Yep, sorry, you see that now? Um, look, yeah. Um, so John's yeah, so John's um yeah, it's gone across to G Suite and it works fine, and that's it. It's it's great. They're both really excellent products. Um, I you know if you're looking at each other fifty fifty when you're talking about a community radio station, either are fine, either are great. It really depends on what the needs of your organisation are and go through. I wonder if John wants to put his hand up and and chat for a couple of seconds about what their experience was with. I'm more than happy for him to take the floor for a minute or two and, and tell us about it if you want, John. I'll let him know. I'll continue on until then, though. In addition to the nineties to now, it's John to be with you for the next hour. Coming up very soon. Oh. I think I just turned John's radio on. Um, <laughs> was it John? Was it John? It was John Vincent? I'm just unmuting John, John. Oh, did you? Thank you very yeah, much. There we go. Hey, John. Sorry. Hello. Thank you for your uh, comment. How are you going? Oh, uh, good. I should turn mine down, I guess. <laughs> That's all right. So tell us. I guess you know you're someone who's using G Suite in your station at the moment. How's that going for you? What's, what's happening? The um, transformation to G Suite wasn't uh, as easy as it might have been because we had to take our um, URL over as well so we can use our normal station URL rather than uh, gmail.com. Yep. That took a bit of happening. Um, but once we got it up and running, it's fine. So the good part about it, of course, is we've now got all our emails um, are being backed up. We're not using personal emails 
we are now using radio station email, so president, secretary, treasurer, etc. Um, when someone changes that position, all we have to do is change the password and the new president, secretary, treasurer is up and running with a, um, you know, a history. Yeah, I guess that's actually something too that I probably haven't included in here is when, you know, for an organisation, um, one of the big significant things is people probably using their personal emails to, um, you know, obviously take on the president, secretary and treasurer emails. So we, if you can centralise this into something with your own domain name, um, not only does it give you some... Pr we're not totally like, there yet, but we're getting there. No, that's fantastic. <laughs> um, so how long, how long ago did you guys start your migration? Uh, probably six months, but it's taking a few people getting used to uh, no, look, the fact that's... That they, if they're doing oh. radio station correspondence, they've got to use Gmail or got to use the G Suite. No, look, I, I, that's, I think that's pretty good. I've done some, I've done some organisational management change for some large uh, companies and government organisations who have migrated to an online cloud platform. Yep. And if you're, if, you're, if you're six months in, you're doing fantastic. I have some that are still five years going. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> no, that's, that's good. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you think you can add to um, you know, your experience? Or, or? Well, one thing you've got to be really careful of because um, when they do their files in documents, spreadsheets, um, PowerPoint, it saves it all the time. So if you open an existing file and change it, you're stuck. You've changed the existing file. What you've got to do is open the existing file and make a copy of it immediately before you start making alterations. Yep. Now that's a, a, a good point. So, how Office um, uh, and G Suite work is they use a, a, a versioning thing. So you you can roll it back, but it's not very not a straightforward process to do it. Um, but yes, one of the big things I guess about moving to online is when you click on something, it opens it straight away. It's not like you can you know, right click and copy it and make it a uh, a really simple, you know, straightforward, like you're using Windows. Yeah, I find it's great because you can, doesn't matter where you are, you, you know, on holidays or whatever, you can answer your emails and pull them up yeah. on the phone and yeah, it's great. Yeah. Now, John, I, I don't know whether you guys use any of these, but I, I included them in here as a, as a pretty decent offer, I think, that uh, G Suite do offer. So, one of the things that you do get when you sign up for Google is you can then start applying for Google, uh, Google ad grants. So this means you can um, promote your station. They'll give you, a, a, depending on what you ask for, they'll give you a credit to advertise and, and help get your rankings up on Google. So you can be, be an ad at the very top of the page rather than, um, you know, being further down the page. So I don't know if you've ever seen like a Google ad looks like that the highlighted, you know, at the very top of the page. Another great thing they offer is the YouTube nonprofit program. Um, it's, that's definitely worth a, a look into and, and maybe something that we do as a future webinar, um, a bit of an instructional video, but uh, YouTube nonprofit is a great way to host videos and data and, you know, even video podcasts or, or what, what you want to call them online, um, you know, in a pretty much unlimited data storage space where you can manage, I guess, what you put up and get stats on, on who's listening. It's like a, a YouTube account, but a nonprofit company one. So you can promote things and, and use some of the credits in there. It's definitely worth a look. Uh, something else that Google do offer as well, um, obviously you can get access to Google Earth and Maps, but also Google donation tools. Um, I've only just noticed that today when I was um, you know, spinning up and uh, you know, putting some final touches on this um, presentation for tonight. Google offer a donation management platform uh, by the looks of it. Uh, I haven't looked too much into it, so I'm not going to recommend it until you to go out and try it, but probably definitely something to research for your organization if you're interested in a way of managing that. Um, again, if you want Titanorama to do some research on that and you know come back to you in another webinar, let us know. We can do a bit more in-depth into the Google side of things. Um, it is a very popular, you know, Google is a very popular platform. But as I said, you know, we're talking directly about probably Office 365 today, more or less just because that's the experience that we've had at Technorama. All right, we'll move a bit into Office 365. Um, so again, i will probably give you this a little bit, a little bit quicker than I hoped, but um, we I talk fast, so do tell me to slow down. Um, you know, a bit of a background about Office 365. It's designed to get you connected into the cloud. It's designed to get your organization, I guess, up and running without the need to have local file storage devices or have everyone sitting in the same office all the time. And I guess that's probably something that is um, very renowned with 
uh, the community organisations that we run, that we can't always be in the station at the same time or we can't always meet at the same time. So we at Tegarama meet monthly. It's all online. No two people in the same room allowed. Um, let's keep that for security reasons. No, um, you know, we're from different states. It makes life a bit difficult to all meet. Um, so meeting online is a really great thing. And I guess Office 365, you know, us moving across to that has helped share files, work on them together and collaborate along, along the way. So Office 365 is the successor court of um, basically the Microsoft Business Product Review Suite. So they first launched some stuff online of Word and, and Excel and went, oh, this is really good. Uh, it's a subscription-based service, so it is a license per month, even though that um, probably the license your station will be using is free. It is renewed monthly. You get like a, a $0 invoice that says Microsoft is giving you this. Um, it, it is free for not-for-profits. Um, and there's a little asterisk there because there are things you can pay for and there is a lot of upsell when you do start to register. If you're an, if you're an administrator and configured as an admin, you do get lots of options to increase your, um, you know, increase what you have, whether it be local desktop apps or access to Skype calling or um, uh, Skype for business calling, which is now Teams calling, et cetera. Um, it's you know, low cost otherwise, because the, the, the discounts are about 70% off what you normally pay as a business. Uh, it's accessible anywhere you have a device or an internet connection. That's probably one of the really good things. You, you know, you, to use these apps, you do need to have an internet connection. It does not work well offline. You can have things offline, but it's not recommended. Um, and you can mix and match things. There's no minimum number of users. You can have one license, you can have 10,000. Um, I know a not-for-profit that I deal with that has uh, 9,400 licenses. Um, so 9,400 users, and I think they pay about $72 a month. Um, which is pretty amazing. Um, so some of the things you get, I guess I touched a bit before online. So Exchange Online, uh, which is an enterprise grade email. So if you ever use Outlook, um, this is basically, you know, the, the thing that Outlook uh, recommends, it's Exchange Online. You get a 50 gig email box that syncs. So this will work on all your, on all your phones, devices, whatever, and you can have you know, your name at yourstation.com or you can have president, treasurer. Um, some organizations, some uh, community radio stations have a email account for every single person in your organization. Um, some just have it for you know, their secretaries or et cetera. Um, there's a couple here in Melbourne that I've helped set up that have you know, two to 300 mail accounts because we've got two to 300 volunteers. Um, and each of them having their own mail and make that uh, a little bit easy to communicate with people and track, you know, who's, who's logging in, et cetera. Um, Skype for Business is another thing included in that, um, uh, which basically is presence plus online web conferencing. So if you, you know, your organization use Web media, WebEx or go to meeting or, or like this one, Zoom, um, Skype for Business internal with your organization can be configured as a conferencing system. So you don't have to pay any extra to use external services. And it's all, you know, your own, your own cloud, basically. You get OneDrive for business, similar, very similar to Dropbox. You can upload whatever you want to that and sync it. You get a terabyte per user, um, which is pretty amazing. Um, uh, some of the stations I've been involved in, we've set up a sync so their logger gets, set up, gets sent up to SharePoint uh, or, or OneDrive. And that way they can use that to access logger files from home. And it costs them nothing to do this. Uh, you get SharePoint Online, so it's a really great space. It's basically like a, a little wiki, same team site for people where they can, uh, you know, create web pages, share wiki files, um, you know, share processes, documents, etc., and set them up for teams. Uh, Office Web Apps, so this is access to Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote docs online. So if you want people to be able to work, work on Word documents or PowerPoint stuff, they no longer need to have the app stored on the computer or a computer that can run these things. They just need to have access to the internet. You can get the Office Professional Plus desktop apps, as I said before, but I already use a paper option. There are other features um, that have been included now, like uh, e-discovery, self-service, legal hold, and et cetera, which will, you can enable basically your um, teams to, you know, uh, track, you know, if you set the mailbox and treasurers to never be able to delete anything from the bank, there are some security features and things you can put around that. Um, but we won't get too much into that today. Um, and, you know, each of these are available, I guess, you know, by themselves as a, as a single user or as multiple users. 
there are a couple of questions. I will just jump into them before we delve into things too. Uh, so, Harry, you've asked which system is the most friendly user to set up and operate like for our volunteer novices. Um, answer at the end of this. Now I'll answer it now for you. Um, so Harry, basically with Office, um, with either of them, they are very straightforward to set up. As John mentioned before, you can have some issues where if you're bringing across your um, your own URL, which most will do, you need to make sure that you've got access to that information. So you need to make sure you can log into usually your hosting provider. So you can make sure that you, uh, you'll need to set up some records that basically say, um, you know, this is, I, I prove that I own this domain, please set it up for me. Once you've done that, it's very straightforward and we'll go through, I guess, uh, on Office 365, how straight, how, how easy that is to set up. But Google is very similar. It's just a uh, fill out an online form, follow the bouncing ball, and away you go. John, you've asked, can John, you've asked, can you have your own URL? The answer is yes. So Microsoft um, by default. So for us, we get uh, Technorama Incorporated dot on Microsoft dot com as a what they call a, 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 a kind of a starter URL. But our Technorama dot org dot au uh, is pointed into that now. So all of our emails, et cetera, are, you know, josh at technorama.org.au, and that's very easy to configure. Um, I guess now, guys, the next part of this um, probably goes into a bit more in depth about, you know, what each product is, but I'm gonna kind of really skip through it. But again, we'll share this with you at the end of the, um, uh, at the end of the webinar. Jordi, I'm sure you can provide me a list of emails. We'll send it to all, all you directly. So you've got it, and we'll put it up on our websites, et cetera, and social media, so we can all see it. Again, keep the questions coming in, guys. I love questions. They make me, you know, this, this is a lot easier to get through. Um, and again, if you've got any experience with your organization providing any of these, do let me know. Um, and I can, you know, let you jump in, have a bit of a chat. So Skype for Business is a really cool little handy app where um, basically it's, I guess, like a, a phone between everyone in your organization. So whether or not you've got people working in an office or you've got people working from home or want to connect and have online meetings, uh, Skype for Business is a really great way to connect up with uh, everyone. Um, you know, webinars is probably one of the biggest things. Sharing desktops, it's, you know, it's also a good support tool for technologists. You can, you know, tell someone to log into Skype, log on and they can share your screen with you and you can jump on and have a look. You can also, I guess, take meeting notes and do lots of stuff. Uh, or call each other um, video chat, audio chat, face to face. Um, one of the really cool things, I guess, that comes of this is the online meeting tool. If you don't have um, access to, you know, Zoom or GoToMeeting, etc., then they come in. You know, it comes in very handy. Exchange, as we touched on a little bit before, it's calendar and email. It's a really uh, actually. Hi, there you go. Heidi just asked to think. Skype for business and Skype are two very different products. Um, uh, so just ask what's the difference between ordering Skype and Skype for business. Um, in the way they function, not a lot, but Skype for business has some more features that allow you to do obviously the webinar stuff, uh, conferencing with more people. Um, and it's more focused at connecting with other people inside your organization than outside your organization. So Exchange is, um, you've all kind of seen Outlook before. It's basically email on steroids, as I said before. It's, you know, 50 gig of data that you can host yourself um, that, that's hosted up there for you. It's also backed up, but you can also, you know, online archive things and, and move stuff around. Um, I've just grabbed some lovely screenshots here from some samples on the internet. SharePoint is another really cool one. So, um, uh, some of the organizations uh, I've helped set this up for have needed a online portal where their volunteers can go to basically, I guess, you know, collaborate with documentation, et cetera, or, or have a message board, have stuff where they can share out things. Um, as you can see, like I'm just as a typical kind of, you know, setup of a site here, um, you know, where there's, there's some online message boards, there's things that are happening around the, around the place. It's just a nice little simple portal way to point everyone to and say, if you want to find out the information, it's on SharePoint. Click on the link, you know, or go to this site and you'll be able to get straight to what you need. Um, with, with Office 365, it's all administered lovely in a 
background admin panel. So there are, uh, this is what it used to look like, just in case people are seeing old things, this is the new one. So the admin portal basically gives you access to all of the back end. So not everyone will have, in your organization will have access to this, only people that you uh, deem you know, who, who need to have access to this. And Harry has asked uh, other platforms secure or should I asked, do they or could they have security issues involved will be compromised by leaky users? The answer is nothing is secure, but as far as security goes, Microsoft do their best to make sure that you um, you don't have leaky users. Um, they you, There are lots of options that you can turn on or turn off depending on what you need for your organization. You can lock things right down so only certain people can access certain types of files or, or certain applications, or you can make it very straightforward um, you know, easy to use, um, you know, log in with simple passwords or you can make passwords complex, set, set how they expire. Um, thank you, Peter. Um, hope that answers your question, Harry, but um, there are lots of things, I guess, in there that you can lock down. Um, it will all be about how you set your users up. So, um, uh, why we switch that one? Just gonna skip through some of this. We will fix this up for you. Yeah, sorry, I think I knocked up my order of things. I'm just gonna find something. All right, so um, someone asked before, how do we basically set this up? It's very straightforward. We all we need to basically do is add your custom domain. So I've put all this in a nice little document that I will share with everyone. So we don't have to go through it. I can choose to tell I'm not one to, to read words off a screen. Um, but it's basically very simple. You sign up for you know a, a domain. If you don't already have one, um, you know they can give you one or point you in the best direction. If you've already got one, they will give you some very specific instructions to, and how to add it to what they call your DNS. So your DNS is what tells your website where things are and where they go. Um, you know, if, you've, if you're, you've got a stream.radiostation.org or you've got mail.radiostation.org, your DNS basically points those records to tell them where to go. So um, somebody or usually whoever set up your website will have access to that. So it's very something that's straightforward and you can jump on and, and do that. Um, most times, as I said, the whole setup, this process of adding your domain takes 15 minutes. Sometimes it can take a bit longer. Um, and that's usually due to whoever your hosting provider or, or domain provider is. Uh, very simple. That's so. Oh, I have lost a page. Just a sec. So I'm just going to change my screen sharing. I should be able to share something else here. Um, might be sick. Hello, you can see lovely me for a second. Sorry guys, I'm just going to change screens here so we can show you some of that last one. Um, share, Google Chrome. Uh, Jordy, can you can just confirm that you can now see my screen? Yep. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, John just sent a message to everyone. Um, this to load. All right. Um, all right. Just leaving a message out of the way. Um, okay. So this is our Texarama. Um, portal and I'm going to show you guys because this is quite nice and easy to, to basically look at. So as you can see we've got a lot of different user accounts and stuff. Um, there's a couple of mailboxes in here that uh, are specifically not shared mailboxes just for a reason and it's basically you know, away. But I guess we'll talk about some licensing and stuff. So um, 
if I jump across here to billing and go to licenses, you'll get a bit of a thing, a bit of a quick look about basically what's available. So uh, once it's sorry, purchase services, they have moved it to this changes weekly. This is something probably to watch out for online apps is they can update them wherever they like. Um, once you log in, you get a couple of different options. Obviously, if you're looking at business, um, you know, you can pay for something. So I'll give you an idea. Something that includes everything is $27.50 a month if you are a business. If you come across to the not-for-profit, it drops it down to $6.90. So a pretty good discount if you want to grab all of the apps and all of the things that happen. Um, there are other stuff, but obviously for most people who are looking at something, you know, uh, Project Online, Visio Online, access to, um, you know, more stuff plus, you know, uh, you know, better high def def definition video conferences. Uh, there are lots of different things. The biggest one you're always looking for is the nice free ones. And it's so easy to add. You just click on it and go get now and tell it you want it. It's very straightforward tells you what it includes, what some secrets are. And obviously, if you're looking here, it gives you a bit of an upsell and says, hey, if you're buying this, why don't you have this? Um, the main difference between the free version and the business version is that it includes, as I said before, the applications it's installing on your computer. Now, five per user, pretty good deal. Plus lots of other fun things. But, you know, when looking at, obviously, um, you know, how you, how you set this up, um, which is one of the things I'll show you of easeability, is when you first set it up, it will ask you to provide some information for your domain. It's very straightforward as to adding your domain, entering the one you own, and moving through. It, it will then basically add that into your organization, and I'm putting in here. And just give you some very simple instructions, add these things to tell you how to do it if you tell it who your provider is. Um, I've never had an issue with a provider not being in here, but there, there could be some out there. It's, um, as I said, very, very straightforward on being able to put that information in uh, and set it up. Once you've done that, you just click verify and it will add everything for you. It, it, that then means it basically gives you an option to use that as an email alias in your domain. I'm just going to move that so it doesn't cause us any issue later on. Um, you know, once you look at, once you basically added your domain, the next straightforward thing you go to is you go and add a user. And if I want to add a user here, it's just very straightforward. There's, there's nothing you need to do. Um, you know, set someone up very easily. And that's all, they, all you have to do for them to, have a, for them to have an email address. So it'll give you the list of types of licenses you have. We've got you know, four of 19 available. Tick the box, you can select, you know, as I was saying with security before, you can select what people have access to. You go add and straight away, Geordie now has a, um, off, you know, a Technorama account. And look, you can all see the password and go and pretend you have for a day. Not really, because I'm going to delete it. Um, once you know you've made your user, they are straight in here. You can you know be very very clear about you know what groups they have access to, where they what they use, what type of stuff they have. I'm still setting this one up, so um, you know it can take a little bit longer. You know, see if they're using their account, see if they're still logged into it, all that kind of stuff. So um, I've used zero percent. That's because we don't use OneDrive. We're using SharePoint. Um, to create stuff. I know what you have, what groups you're in, all the other fun stuff. Does anyone have any questions as we're going through this now? Has anyone in this group migrated to Office 365 already? Sorry, Geordie, I'm deleting you. That's okay. I've got too many emails anyway. <laughs> this is it. This is when you're looking at things, you know, the amount of email addresses we have these days just keeps adding up. Mm -hmm. um, um, I guess a bit of a pause break right now just to let me um, uh, breathe for a second. Um, I was wondering if John can run us through the upcoming webinar. 
Well, thank you, Josh. Um, the upcoming webinar that's on the 25th of June this month, so it's at the end of this month, is going to be a little bit of an experiment. So in the time-honoured uh, manner of having radio station where the tech is online waiting to take your call, we're going to do the same thing for Technorama. It's called Stump the Jumps. We'll have a tech team available to take your questions online. We'll use voice, we'll use pictures, we'll draw diagrams, we'll do whatever it takes. And if nobody calls in, we'll sit around and we'll have a bit of a chat. So these will be technology experts who will answer your questions to the best of our ability or talk crap, whichever comes first. Stump the Chumps, 25th of June on this webinar, the Technorama Tuesday webinar series. And now back to Josh. Thanks. John, how's the weather over in Kilsyth today? Oh, the weather is lovely here at the moment. We're heading to an overnight temperature of absolutely nothing, but much warmer because we've got the air conditioning running. Oh, lovely. Well, inside this lovely shopping centre, it is beautiful and warm right now, but I'm pretty sure they've just turned the heaters on because the big background noise has stopped. Um, thank you very much. Um, so, guys, again, look, I'm going to put out to... Oh, no, there's the background noise again. It's way too soon. Has anyone got any questions? I guess they want to specifically know about Office 365 because I'd much rather probably spend the last uh, 10, 15 minutes of this uh, really directing answering questions and running through with you guys what, um, you know, how to set this up because the documentation I'm going to give you is pretty, I think, pretty clear on how to set it up and I'm more than happy to give you my email and phone number to answer any questions you have while setting it up. Someone got some questions or is there an organisation that's been interested in moving to this but isn't quite sure yet? And Harry Miller is rubbing it in saying it's 22 degrees in Cairns. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much, Harry. Sounds quiet, Geordie. Yeah, everyone's gone quiet. Actually, if, if nobody else is going to drop in, I'll make a comment uh, because they stupidly left me un unlocked. The, <laughs> we, we set we set this up. Uh, Josh brought uh, the MS platform to us. We'd noodled around using a bit of shared documentation, using a lot, uh, sorry, shared doc tools, and using a lot of um, other specific tools cobbled together, like Dropbox, like um, Quick Topic, yeah, all, all stuff that helped us get going. But the conversion to MS took oh, probably the best part of an hour. So to move absolutely everything from our email accounts on our shared cPanel based hosting, plus shared storage, plus everything else, we'd basically done the hard work in under an hour without anybody else really being involved. Josh and I uh, did it and Josh did most of the work. I think the scariest part is not knowing what you don't know and, and having built up a repository of knowledge about how to do things quickly, suddenly being in a new paradigm of the MS environment and not knowing where the buttons were anymore, um, that's a bit tricky. And we haven't really got past that one yet. But in terms of everything working, um, pretty much all of the lead up planning for TR19 was done on this platform and we cut over during that lead up without anybody noticing that we'd done it. And that's possibly the biggest accolade that you give to a platform like this. Nobody noticed that we'd done anything and there were no particular impacts within the team that we had noticed. We um, email just moved and we continued using the tools. And it's, it's very hard to say better than that. That's, I guess, pretty, a pretty good point, John. Um, you know, moving across to this is, is yeah, that easy. It's, Pretty straightforward to get yourself across to it, providing you've got a few things, you know, I guess set up beforehand. And I guess that's one of the things that I was talking about for with uh, Connecting Up. They offer some really good uh, readiness assessment tools to make sure you've got all that information ready to go. Um, and look, some of the things that you need to make sure ready to go, bearing on tick answer now, is, you know, so we basically get an activation code through Connecting Up and then you go and register through um, Microsoft Office yourself. You've got to, I guess, do a bit of mouse on that to make sure, um, you know, you, you know they've got the right details and you're the right person. But it's it's very straightforward. It's a simple online form. It's like registering to to use any online platform. Um, 
you know, once you've kind of in though, you, as I showed you guys before, you need to make sure that you've got the your DNS stuff. You need to know who who, who manages that in your organisation. If it's you, that's great. That's really easy to do. But there are some organisations that, you know, somebody set up this website and email six seven years ago, and we don't know where the password is. Um, there are lots of online tools to find that out. And if you get stuck with things, um, you know, do give Technorama a buzz, and we can point you in the right direction. It's uh, Pretty straightforward once we do that. Um, someone has also asked the question, what's all the banging noise in the background? They are tearing the shopping center down around me. That's the reason I'm here. Um, so I've just moved to a quieter location. So bear with us. Um, and yeah, thanks everyone for listening. So is there any, anyone got any questions they want to know about? I'm kind of happy to open the floor now and start talking about you know, things, you know, wants to share experiences with moving to cloud apps that didn't quite work and what's some advice I would as I said, much rather spend the last couple of minutes helping people out with issues than just blabbering off a PowerPoint screen. Does Geordie want to tell us about how lovely Office 365 is working for the CMTO? Yeah, <clears throat> we, we actually um, use Google Suite a lot more than Office 365. Oh, yeah. um, generally, we're just using Office 365 um, for our <clears throat> laptops that we send out for students so they can access all of the apps. Um, I think it's really interesting the stuff about Skype for business and that's definitely something I want to um, investigate a little bit more. But we do use Google Hangouts. Um, Yep, so, which is fantastic. Yeah, it's really good because um, I don't know if people know, but CBAA and the CMTO had a little bit of a refit recently and they basically pulled down the entire office around us. So um, the CMTO had to kind of work from home for a couple of weeks. So we used Google Suite and G Suite and we used um, Google Hangouts to kind of um, talk to each other. So, so every morning we just went online and we're able to like hit the video button and just kind of have a room open where we were all talking to each other and have video on. It was so easy. You're basically sitting in your email and then you just press like a little video button and it comes on and you, you can see your, your um, other people who might be sitting at their computer as well. So yeah, I found it really, really useful. Um, and yeah, in terms of mo Microsoft 365, now that I've had a bit of a look at this, I'm interested in looking at some of those other functions now. Yeah, as I said, sorry, so I click on mute when I talk, probably helps. Mm -hmm. As I said before, there are so many things in there and like to go through everything right now as a feature would take us all evening. You know, there are um, hundreds of thousands of, of things in here, you know, room, room and equipment hire, um, uh, you know, reporting on, on, on things that you're doing. Um, you know, you can set up apps inside SharePoint, the uh, membership portals and payment gateways and, and all these things. There are, hundreds of thousands of things that live inside um, uh, that you know basically live, live in this app as well so you know you've got you can manage you know devices in your station using um, you know basically remote security management you can you know use Yammer which is like Facebook in the cloud or flow to run things that um, you know run automate workflows and stuff for your station power apps and things there's lots of things that you can do to you know power up your organization and and keep things keep things moving along. Um, you know, it's it's a big web of things. And us as Technorama just recently going to it, I guess, a learning. You know, the, the board are learning some different tools and functions and things. But as we go through stuff, people are, you know, becoming really great. I guess you know, John can probably talk about you know doing things like file sharing and stuff like that, and working on the same document together across you know states to make sure that you know the Technorama programming is up to scratch or our budgeting is done and, and things like that. You don't, you no longer need to have all of your community members or all of your volunteers sitting in the same room. They could be wherever you want them to be or wherever they want to be. Probably more importantly, like sitting in a shopping center. So yeah, it's good for that project management element as well. Yeah, look, there are some great, you know, there are some great things in here. And if we go back to, I guess, the connected apps and stuff, you know, planner is a, is a good little function that enables you to, um, you know, set, set up tasks and stuff like that. You know, different things that need to be done, uh, assign tasks to different people. Uh, you know, project management platform, straight away in here, who's got things to do, who's late on their tasks, who hasn't done what. Um, you know, most of these say late because they've already been done, but um, you know, 
Planner is one of the tools. Um, you know, there's one driver. So Yammer is, is a um, a Facebook tool for businesses. Um, you know, free to use once you're in here. You can, and you can share this multiple sites. Um, we've just set up some stuff, you know, Yammer, Yammer, Yammer for, for setting it up. But there are so many different, you know, things in here. And I'm more than happy if people want to know more about stuff to, you know, shoot me an email and we'll dive straight into it. Um, I'll have a great chat over the phone about it because, it, you know, it is a fantastic product. Um, you just have to know where to look and what to do. I think um, unless people have more questions or comments or want to know more stuff, we could probably leave it there and, and um, you know, see how we go with reopening discussions. And I guess there are also the Facebook groups, community, uh, the Q&A forms, ticking around the Facebook page. And lots of other ways to ask us questions about things. Mm. I think it's just, you know, there's also that, like, that interesting question around, like, how do you take the plunge to kind of switch everything over to this? And how do you convince the rest of the people at your station that it's a good idea? Look, well, you know, I guess uh, you can show them the webinar and show them all the lovely great things it does. Um, you know, um, I'm hoping to, I guess, publish a bit of a one-pager up on Technorama with, to go along with this PowerPoint today about... Um, you know, pros and cons for each app. I'm just, uh, you know, putting together a final review. I'm actually getting someone from connecting up to assist me with putting that together just to make sure I get all the licensing requirements correct because they can be a bit fiddly once you start stepping off their free plans. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess from what John said before, you know, it took us 15 minutes and, and we took the plunge. You just have to jump across... And, and, you know, I guess dive into it. It's one of those things that, you know, a bit of, bit of planning about what you want to do and... Um, you know, you can make this a really simple thing for your organisation. You get a great tool to to use. And, and apropos of what Josh just said, like 15 minutes we took the plunge and we turned the switch. But a bit of planning and, and actually a lot of planning doesn't go astray. And the area where you need the planning is, I think, in... Well, this is me looking from the outside of the process, is twofold. One is which applications are going to give you the best benefit, best business and organisational benefit? So what are you going to invest your effort in first? Uh, the obvious one was email. And we didn't particularly have a big spam problem beforehand, but we've had absolutely none since we went over. The, the filtering is all very good. So it's just like using the Microsoft Exchange server in the sky that you just don't have to worry about. But... But certainly knowing what applications you wanted to focus on. The other bit, and we didn't focus on this, and fortunately, because everybody's relatively high skill, we didn't come unstuck. But I can see in a radio station you might. And that is around organisational change. So implementing something like this and suddenly switching from everybody has their own spreadsheet and they're attaching that to an email and just forwarding it around and, and backwards and forwards and switching to the shared platform can introduce some organisational change aspects that maybe you want to think about first. And you just want to say to everybody, okay, we're going to do this. We're going to do it on this day. Here's how it's going to work. Let's lead you through the process. So that when it does happen, nobody is surprised and you can immediately start getting the benefit. You really wouldn't want to underestimate the impact of making an organisational shift uh, against people who might not be quite ready for that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, you know, as you said, some planning prior to jumping into jumping into it, obviously. And as to, uh, earlier, you need to have all your ducks in a row. You need to make sure you've got all the information behind you, all the things about what you're going to use. Um, you know, if you're a, an organisation that's a little bit, uh, needs a little bit more assistance in picking things up, then there are training manuals that you can basically print and hand to your users and say, um, you know, here you go. Here is how you can access your email going forward. And, you know, very straightforward from home, you know, it's one link to log into and you get access to everything. It's one password to remember, which is a really good thing. Um, and probably one of the biggest things that's helped get a lot of organisations across is there is one password to remember. Um, uh, Heidi did just ask a quick question of what does Flow do? Um, I'll just put up on the screen, um, I guess something that will probably kind of really high basically level explain it, but you can basically tell Flow, if this happens, do this. It's a bit of a if this, then that. If somebody sends an email doing this, create this if someone emails an attachment for this save it to my OneDrive um, you know if somebody creates a new project send it to the whole team all this kind of stuff so um, you know I'm more than happy if people want to have a bit of play to give them access to a, a demo portal as well um, just email me josh at technorama.org.au 
and I can point you across to a demo, you know, even spend a, you know, half an hour showing you through and talking about what your organization might need. I'm more than happy to do that because, you know, uh, Office 365 or Google are both great products and we can show you through either of them. Fantastic. All right. Well, we might wrap it up there if um, there's no further questions. Um, people jump, are jump in, people. Now's the time. Now's well. Yeah. No <laughs> more questions coming through. All right. Well, we will definitely send through Josh, Josh's slides to everyone who is on the session tonight. We'll also send a recording through on this so you can share it with people um, at your stations and other people who might be interested. Um, Josh, thank you very much for tonight. Anything that you wanted to add before we finish up? No, thank you for everyone who listened to me talk for an hour straight. It's been a great uh, pleasure, I guess, delivering to this to you. And um, you know, as I said, um, uh, when the when you get the email about everything, um, you know, it, if you want to grab any of this stuff, it will all be on the Technorama website. Um, you know, etc. Thank you so much. All right, excellent. Okay, thanks everyone for joining us this evening and um, I hope that you are staying warm wherever you are and um, staying out of the crazy weather. Um, thanks very much to John Mazels as well for your input and we will be in touch again before Stump the Chumps comes up so you can get yourself all registered for that session um, on the 25th of June, I believe it was. Um, all right.